You may have heard of him, and you may not have, but if you haven't, you can be sure you've heard of one of his boats. This week we're talking about one of the most influential yacht designers in our lifetime, and we're saying goodbye to a legend. This week on Everything You Need to Know, we're paying our respects to Ted Brewer. Longtime Lady K Sailing viewers may remember a piece that we did previously on CNC Yachts, and that company was created by George Cuthbertson. And George plays a role here, a big one. Edward S. Brewer, more commonly known as Ted Brewer, was born in 1933 in a place called Canada. In Hamilton, actually, Hamilton, Ontario, which is a short drive from where I'm sitting right now. By 1957, he climbed to the rank of lieutenant in the Canadian Army. Yes, we have a Canadian Army. But while Ted did very well in the military life, he finally resigned his commission to go back to the one thing he loved the most, yachts and sailing. He had some friends in the boat world, and he was able to land himself a job selling boats. The man he was working with, another yacht broker, helped Ted get a foothold in the boating world of the 1960s, which was a busy place. And that man was called George Cuthbertson, that we mentioned earlier, founder of CNC Yachts, a legend in his own right. So George and Ted spent a great deal of time racing on 8 meter, or 26 foot for my American friends, sailboats on Lake Ontario. And Ted also spent a lot of time sailing alone on his own smaller boats. While George and Ted worked together, Ted was also in the background on his own time working on his course with the West Lawn School of Yacht Design, and he was learning a lot of yacht design stuff from his good friend, Dick Telford. By the end of the 1960s, with a great amount of experience, he found himself the opportunity to join a design firm and start his designing career, which is what he really wanted to do. The only problem was the job wasn't in Canada. It was in a place called Connecticut, in a place called America, working for a man called Bill Lutters. You may know him. So of course, Ted took the job, he uprooted to the United States, and he became an assistant designer. Bill Lutters and Ted first worked on some smaller boats, the 5.5 meter class, and they made about 50 different boats, and they graduated up to make bigger boats. They would eventually be designing some 12 meter America's Cup race boats. Now, before Ted arrived on the scene in Connecticut, Bill Lutters had built the classic racing sloop called Weatherly. In 1958, the Weatherly competed in the defense of America's Cup, but she sadly lost the race. Wanting to take the Weatherly back for another crack at it, in 1962, Bill had Ted help modify the Weatherly with a shorter stern, a modified rudder, and a whole lot of weight savings, and this time, the Weatherly won. In 1967, Ted uprooted again from Connecticut, this time he moved to Brooklyn, Maine, but he kept working with Bill Letters. He also started working with a designer called Bob Wallstrom, who we've mentioned before, and the two of them produced over a hundred boat designs together. They built everything from 18-foot catboats to the stunning 62-foot Traveler 3. In the 1970s, with all of his experience, Ted designed a radius bilge method for building steel and aluminum hulls, and it's been copied religiously ever since. By this point, living in Maine, Ted was in his 40s, and he'd already had an amazing and very successful career. But he wasn't done yet. In 1969, he uprooted again, and this time moved all the way across the country to live in Washington State. In Washington, not to be forgotten, he made another 160 boat designs, some very notable designs like the Whitby 55 and even a 70-foot schooner that won the Antigua Race Week in the year 2000. In all, Ted is credited with over 270 sailboat designs. Lady K Sailing and Everything You Need to Know are brought to you by patrons, people who give a couple of bucks an episode to keep this channel improving. Thank you for making this all possible. Eventually, Ted and his wife retired. They moved back to Canada to British Columbia, where he did continue his sailing career by lecturing in ship design and writing articles for prominent sailing magazines. He also wrote three books. Now, not just designing, Ted has raced all over the world, and he is accredited with more boat designs than almost anyone else. His designs are still available for purchase if you want to build one, and most of them are still very successful. But the timing of this episode is not a coincidence. A few weeks ago, I received a message from my friend Mark from Sailing Vagari. 
That's a YouTube channel and a friend of mine. You should check them out. I'll put a link right below the video in the description. Mark messaged to give me some sad news. After a long life, an illustrious career in the sailing world, untold race wins, and endless successful yacht designs, Ted Brewer died peacefully in his home a few days ago. May he rest in peace. Ted Brewer designed a lot of race boats. He did a lot of racing, but he also designed some of the most iconic cruising boats. And while you may not have heard of the man, here are just some of what we can thank him for in the cruising world. For starters, four different boats made by Aloha, some of which appear in their own YouTube channels right now, like the Aloha 34. This is a stout, feel-kin boat, well-made and sturdy, and it makes an exceptional cruising boat. This is one design that I looked at very carefully before buying Lady K, and the two designs have a lot in common. We can't miss the Mighty Brewer 44. Brittany from Wind Traveler had one of these, and they are amazing. This boat is on my bucket list for cruising boats I would love to have. They're also an amazing option if you want to go cruising with a small family. It would be very hard to beat this center cockpit Caribbean cruiser. And speaking of cruising boats, how about the 6 foot 3 inch draft 25,000 pound Cape North 43? Oh, and if that's not big enough, check out the Constellation 44 with her go anywhere keel and yes, center cockpit design. We're kind of seeing a pattern here, aren't we? When Ted Brewer puts his brain to cruising boats, he loves to design boats that are safe and capable. Center cockpits with huge heavy keels, live aboard interiors, and sturdy keel step masts. If you want something a bit smaller, Ted also designed the Hullmaster 27 and 31. These things are beautiful boats, gorgeous lines, and again, sturdy construction. And let's not forget about Morgan and Oceanic. And of course, the big dog that most of you remember the most, the Whitby. Whitby is a name that comes up a lot if you're looking for an older, racier style cruiser. And while yes, they are older, Whitby made some incredible boats, like my friend Mark's boat from Sailing Vagari. That's a Whitby. Not a brewer design, but a Whitby nonetheless. Ted helped make them a couple of battle-ready cruisers over at Whitby, though. Some take-anywhere, true blue water cruisers. We're, of course, talking about the Whitby 42 and the Whitby 55. Both are center cockpit, go-anywhere style boats. You can find both of them in any anchorage all over the place. The 42 gets a monstrous full keel, aperture prop, and a full keel hung rudder, while the 55 gets a huge modified fin stretching half the length of the boat. Ted Brewer really does have a legacy that will go on for years, and we really can't thank him enough for everything he did for the sailing world, from amazing race-winning boats to some of the most iconic and capable cruising boats ever made. This month, let's take a moment to remember the designer, the racer, and all-around amazing sailor, Ted Brewer. Fair winds, Captain. We'll see you guys next week.